And how do we want to introduce Chef Sherry with, mm -hmm. with what? what Chef Sherry sauces. With Chef Sherry sauces. Yep. Chef, this one? Yeah, Chef Sherry Chef Sherry. Sherry. <laughs> Well, hello everybody, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison, and this is Chef Sherry with Chef Sherry Sauces. That's the third time I said that. But today what we want to do, we're at Chef Sherry's uh, place, her, her kitchen. How about you introduce yourself? Okay. Hi, Chef <laughs> Sherry. Uh, yeah, we're here in my home and uh, Dr. Harrison and I decided it would be a great thing to get together to help both uh, my customers as well as his clients mm -hmm. with feeling more comfortable in the kitchen in general. And so for our first episode, we're going to be talking about knives. Uh, it is not as dreary and as bland as you might think because we're going to be going <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we're going to be going over the different types of knives, how to hold knives, how to correctly cut produce, um, and then see what we can do with what we cut. So uh, join us for these next, what, 20 minutes or so, I guess sure. we're going to be on the we'll video. We're uh, winging it. I'm the grasshopper, yeah. this is the professional. So as long as we don't have any bleeding here, we'll be okay. Can't guarantee that because I've seen the, I've seen the state of your knives. So no, we're gonna no, talk no, about no. that. We're gonna get no. these six too. So, okay. all right, first thing, um, if you're gonna have any knife, if you're gonna invest in any kind of a knife, the first one I would recommend you get is a really great quality chef's knife. Chef's knives come in uh, different lengths. This one I think is an eight inch one. They also go in a 10 inch. I would recommend going to a store if at all possible because you want to make sure that it fits well within your grip because obviously we've got different sized hands they make different size grips so if we take a look at what dr harrison has his is bigger than mine it's a bit bulkier uh, for the handle itself so maybe let's just take a step back what why are knives so important? We were just, I was laughing about this and I said, a chef's knives are like a mechanic's tools. You, you know, it, 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 is, it is sacred. But why are they so important? So if you have poor quality knives, it not only does it make your job in the kitchen more difficult, it makes you don't want to cook. Mm -hmm. Like if you do, if there's anything in life that you have to do and it's hard for you, you're less likely to do it. Having good quality knives, investing in the quality of the knife, um, is going to make you more likely to actually want to put in the effort to put together a meal. And since you and I both are all about how can we help people be healthier in general, anything we can do to take that obstacle out of your way uh, is absolutely important. That makes sense. Okay. Perfect. Great. So can you tell me what this knife is called? No, it looks sharp. <laughs> can you find yours? I don't know. Is this supposed to be the equivalent? It's kind of the equivalent. Yours is really long. It's this bigger. is called. This is called a utility knife. Bigger isn't better. Bigger is okay. not better. Um, and we'll actually get to that with a pairing knife as well. Okay. So Utility knife? Yeah. So your chef's knife is considered the all-around, this is your all-around workhorse of a knife. If you're going to have one great knife, you want it to be the utility mm -hmm. knife because okay. you can use it for anything from cutting large pieces of meats to dicing up uh, herbs. Mm -hmm. Now there are other knives which we're going to go through that are actually uh, used for those specific tasks. Okay. But if you're going to have one knife, make it a good utility knife. Next up is, I'm sorry, good chef's knife, not utility knife. Next up is the utility knife. This, this one? Yep, this is for all kind of medium-sized tasks that don't require uh, a, a lot of effort that are on the smaller side of produce or uh, proteins and things like that. Now you can have a basic one like this that's very rigid, or you can have one like this that's actually quite flexible. This is actually called a fillet knife, so make sure you check them out if you're just looking at them. This is good for obviously like filleting seafood. Hmm. Okay, uh, next up, this little guy. This one. Do you know what he's called? No. This is a paring knife. Oh, okay. This is a paring knife. This is great for the small tasks. If you want to peel an apple, uh, if you want to cut uh, off the uh, the middle of strawberries, mm -hmm. anything that's a smaller, more delicate work, that's what you use your paring knife for. Okay. All right, last one. You've got such a tiny bell. <laughs> this is called a santoku knife. Okay, look at that. Okay. <laughs> santoku. Sen sen okay. Santoku. Um, and this is used for chopping. So when you look at your knives to figure out what they're good for. If you've got a curved knife like this, 
This is for it to be used in a rocking motion, and mm. we'll get to that. This straight knife for chopping. Okay. okay. All right. So next up, the importance of having a sharp knife. And we were joking about this, um, but it's true. You are more likely to hurt yourself with a dull knife than a sharp knife. So taking care of your knives is truly one of the most important things you can do for them. After you finish washing or using them, get over there, wash them off and let them dry. Because when you invest in good quality knives, they're made with quality steel that can, uh, that can rust if you don't okay. take, if you don't take the right care of it. Now there is such a thing as <laughs> this device, it's called a honing steel. This does not sharpen a knife. A lot of people think that this, that these will sharpen a knife. Um, they don't. You can use them both in an upwards fashion or downwards. My preference is downwards just because I'm less likely to cut myself, right? Because I'm cutting away from it. What this does is it helps straighten a blade. So if it's got little, little waves in it oh, okay. from cutting, that's what that will do. Oh. To sharpen it, you have to either have a hand tool or a, um, or a machine. So I have a machine and I'll just pull mine out. I have this guy, he's got three different slots in it. So first grade is for a really rough cut. This is a medium cut and then this is a fine cut. So if you use your knives a lot, um, I like I put mine through the fine probably twice a week, I'd say. It's almost uh, like a maintenance. It is, it, it helps. Versus it just helps. a complete rebuild. This is the rebuild. <laughs> I do this guy probably every two to three months. I'll mm -hmm. go through the whole cycle. About every six weeks or so, I'll do a level two and a level one. And then, like I said, two or three, to, once or twice a week, I will get into just this general one. And so I, I definitely couldn't appreciate the science of knives. When we, we talk, oh, we'll do this, we'll talk about knives. I'm like, really? Knives? Why knives? Yes. Now I know knives. Yes. Now, I know I understand, but but I can also see I can also see the importance, like you said, not only injury, but efficiency, I don't know, just another pain point. It, it is, mm -hmm. and um, you know, when I have gone over to people's homes to give them cooking lessons and so forth, and and I've brought my knives, but I try to use their knives first. Oh my God, I would, I, there's no way I'd cook if I had some of those knives because, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to get through a tomato and, and you just can't do it. And we'll, so uh, full disclosure, mm -hmm. Dr. Harrison has not sharpened his knives and he's told me that he does not have good knives. And mm -hmm. so we're gonna put that to the test here live on the camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so let's start with, let's start with the tomato. Okay. okay. All right. Perfect. So. I want you to show me how you would cut this tomato. Oh, this is on the spot. Well, since now I know a couple of things about knives, maybe I'll use this one. I don't think I can go wrong. Is this the one you would use? Okay, so this is a test. I don't know. I don't know how I would want to cut it. Maybe I would cut it this way. Okay. Well, that wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, that's how I would cut the tomato. So before we go through the tomato, what is what, what did I do wrong? <laughs> You didn't do anything wrong. But what I want you to do is now try the rest of the tomato with my knife and see if you can feel a difference. Okay. It's heavier. Oh yeah, it's like, it's like butter now. Yeah. Okay. Drastically different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that is... Uh, you're be careful with that knife. Yeah, that's, it's one of those where if Don't you, drop, if, if you drop it, just let it fall and you'll figure it out from there. Um, so to cut a tomato, we're going to go into, we'll do a bit of a, a small dice. So one of the, the nice things that, that you should do when you're dealing with a rounded vegetable is give yourself a little bit of a flat surface. So I, I'm just going to leave the core there for now. I'll take care of it later, but just cut off a little slice on the bottom so that now it lies flat. Hmm. You do it with onions whatever it is that you're cutting, but this way you don't risk it rolling away from you as you get into it. Next up, when you go to cut, you want to make sure that you protect your fingers. So if you hold it like this, if your knife slips, you're coming right down here on the top of your fingertips, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to perfect, and, it, and I will tell everybody, it, it does feel awkward at first, but it's called the claw. And uh, it's not Jim Carrey's The Claw from his movie, it is The Cooking Claw. Mm -hmm. And basically you put your, your fingers down like this and then you use the edge of your fingers as the guide from where you're going to cut. So I've got my claw uh -huh. and 
you just slice it down like this. And you just move your fingers back as you cut. And so you don't have to worry about anything rolling, right? It's an unnatural position to move your fingertips in. Yeah. It take a long time to get used to that. I would say give yourself a few months. No. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, it, you also have to figure out, are you more comfortable at a big knuckle bend, slight mm -hmm. knuckle bend, and then you'll start to get comfortable to the point where you're rubbing. okay. There it is. It's right up against it. Correct. Okay. Yep. Then it's like a guide. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is, we're going to, actually we're going to finish cooking this, cutting this up. So. Uh, so I'm going to show Dr. Harrison how to sharpen a knife. Um, and he, we were actually just chatting now about how some people uh, sharpen their knives. So again, the honing steel is just for straightening things. Um, if you don't have a mechanical one like this, they sell handheld that you can run it through, but then there are also whetstones, which is what you'll find in a lot of uh, kitchens. Mm -hmm. And literally it is just a, it's a stone and it's got different grades and you keep it oiled and then you sharpen your knife by coming across it like this, like very mm -hmm. at the right angle. I like the, electronic one because it just takes the worry out of it for me. You can see well, the like, angle, the angle is right. Exactly. It's already yeah. angled for me. All yeah. I have to do is just pull it slowly. Uh -huh. So I'm going to show him how to do this one. Then uh, you can laugh at him trying to do it himself. And then we're going to turn the camera off. And while we finish I up the rest of the knives. I know my position in this video. <laughs> Grasshopper. <laughs> All right. So you start, make sure you start at um, the base of the knife, which is right by the bolster. Cause that's actually where you do a lot of cutting. So. <laughs> try now. Um, the other thing is make sure that you sharpen as many equally on sides. So if you do 10 times on the left side, make sure you do 10 times on the right side. So, so all right, we're back and right. all knives are sharpened and I had Dr. Harrison cut the rest of his tomato using the new, new knife. Uh -huh. Thoughts? It, the knife falls through it now and we're talking about a tomato here so I know we have some more ingredients we're going to go through but yeah it, it cuts the job down by a, a sixth anyway half yeah yeah so would, would it make you did it give you that idea of okay i'd be more likely to do this oh for sure i think anything with a skin especially a tomato if you're sawing i sawed tomatoes many a times <laughs> and those weren't serrated knives no and that's painful yeah. yeah so no yeah it's a lot more welcoming it's faster i can't imagine what would the speed difference be if say you were at a friend's place oh, and you can call out your friends yeah <laughs> at least 50 percent sometimes because mm -hmm. i have to like literally put a knife on it and you hit yeah. it to go through an onion where as you'll see here now with your new knife with my knife when we get to the onion it's just going to go right through mm -hmm. it versus having to chuck 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 and then that's right just it's, frustrating yeah it's we're, just frustrating yeah we're talking about knives it seems like such a simple thing you have knives and a knife is a knife well apparently knives aren't just knives <laughs> and, you, and you actually have to upkeep them but the whole purpose of this is to make things efficient so people are willing to do it it's not a pain point correct right? yeah the, again this is all about making uh cooking easy and fun and accessible so that it's something that you want to do. It's something you look forward to doing. It's not something that you're like, uh, I just don't feel like it tonight. I'll dial up the 1-800 pizza number, right? It's, I can throw this together quickly. So. That's right. And, and like I asked you at the start, I said, what is the most important thing in the kitchen? It's the knives. There wasn't even a hesitation. Yeah. Nothing. So it that's, is what, the knives. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's, one thing I didn't cover, which I do want to cover real quick, is um, when you do use your cutting board, it's really important to keep it safe and secure. So you'll see underneath yours, I have just basic shelf lining. You were expecting something on yes. my side. Yes, I was. So, because that way it doesn't move like this. And what I meant to demo to you earlier is that, see, mine goes around like this. It's, so if I'm pushing hard on something, the board could slip, which causes the knife to slip, which causes me to cut myself, right? So it's really important that you get this safe and secure. So if you don't have um, a grip, what you can do is just use paper towel. Get it wet, put it underneath, and then you stick your cutting board right on top of it. Yeah. So while I do that, I'm going to have you start on the next thing. 
So would it be safe to say if your cook, your chef, has lots of cuts on their hands, they're probably a bad cook or a bad chef? No. Would, oh, it, okay. it, would it safe to say is that they're probably going too fast? And I'm so glad you brought that up because that is something that I wanted to impart to the video. Going fast does not mean you're a great chef. So a lot of people feel like they need to be able to dice an onion quickly or whatever it is that they should be able to go and yeah, we can't oftentimes. Looks right, it looks fun, right? It's a great little party trick, but it's not a party trick if you end up in the ER needing stitches. Onion time. Okay. I'm gonna let you do this one. I may or may not pull up this guy, but okay. here's what we do. Uh -huh. This is called the root end, right? Where you've got, because it's literally the root as it grew in the ground. If you're going to dice an onion, you don't want to cut off the root end. Uh -huh. Um, but what I'm going to have you do is you're going to cut it in half lengthwise like this. Okay. You cringing yet? Nope. Oh, well, I didn't even have to saw. <laughs> okay, so okay. you can see that little root. All right, so now let's take off the rest of the outer peel, right? Okay. Once you cut into it, it makes it easier. So now you can trim off this this little edge. We we'll use yours. No, we're gonna do yours too. Okay. Oh, you don't so get out of this. This, one, this edge. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Again, with cutting. Hold your knife for me. Get ready to cut. Okay. So, show them how you're holding your knife. That's wrong. Okay. That's wrong. Okay. Because <laughs> if you go like this, you you're controlling the bolster. You're not control. I mean, you're controlling the handle. You're not controlling the blade. Okay. So you want to actually pinch right by the bolster. So you hold it like this. Oh. Got that. And mm -hmm. then wrap your fingers. Oh. This is how you do it. This is another thing that's going to take a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, yeah, you're like, man, this is so much better. We would always be scared to touch the blade. That's the scary spot. Right? Nope, not yeah. the scary spot. Okay. The underside of the blade, yes. Top of yeah. the blade, no. Okay. So this is this is how you hold it. All right. So to dice, move my tomatoes up a little bit here. To dice an onion, you're going to want to make three cuts. Okay. You can do, you can almost do the first two in either order. But the way that I like to do it is you're going to take your onion and you're going to make three cuts this way. So it's going to be like a third of the way and a third away and then up top here. Okay. So I'll show you. Oh, should also mention the important thing to do when you're cutting is so many people have their stuff so far away, right? You're out here reaching, trying to do, bring it in as close as you can. Now, ideally you want to cut parallel to the body. I like to actually angle myself. I just find it more comfortable to cut like this versus straight on. Mm -hmm. So to get into this position, you're going to hold it, flat hand, nice and tight, and you're going to cut just until you get to that root, which is why we're not going to cut the root off. Hmm. And if you lose some parts of the onion along the way, uh, that's all right. You, you know, you can pick those up with a, with a future dice. So there goes one cut. And this onion is kind of small, so I may just do two cuts. I've honestly never cut an onion like that in my life. Yeah. I didn't even know it was a thing. That's what this is all about. That's what it's all about. So yeah, you can do something wrong for a long, long time. <laughs> Grasshopper learns new tricks. Grass every day. All right. There's no way I could have did this with this knife prior. There's was no it way. not just too dull? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Three cuts. Three cuts, perfect. Okay, so now, keeping it all together, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're gonna come through and you're gonna do vertical cuts. You're not gonna necessarily follow the lines that mm -hmm. grow into a, an onion organically, but you wanna make them about the same size, right? And you don't want to cut all the way through. That's the whole thing. So just cut up to like that top area, like okay. this. Okay. So like this, and again, you're gonna have your claw, right? Mm -hmm. And come in. Again, if you lose some, don't worry about it. Now, once you get to the very end of an onion, sometimes it's hard to keep that claw. You just like move it off to the side. Safety is the important part. Doing this. Done. 
All right, so you're, you you just gave me a look like, please don't look at my no, hair. You're, yeah, don't look at kind my of, hair. kind of. Yours is a little more prettier than mine. No, that's all right. Part of it. No, that's all right. Keep it up there. Okay. All right, so last thing, same grip it, turn it, and then now you're going to go across like this. So again, watch that claw. Mm -hmm. Make sure you protect your fingers. And we're going to do, again, a small dice. So somewhere around a quarter inch in size. And see, you've got these pretty little dice. Mm. Yeah, you got it. So try to, instead of oh. try to just push it down and rock through. Hence the sharp knife. Yeah. So if you've got this big guy and he's in your way, mm -hmm. you can just throw him aside. Okay. We'll, we'll catch he's him later. He's bolted off the island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Look what you did. With a sharp knife. Yes. And I'm like, I could, I could, there's no way I could have did that with this knife before. Fabulous. So, well. Oh. Right, so, just push that off to the side. Oh. All right, next up, let's tackle, let's tackle the avocados. All right. So, Fun fact about avocados you showed me earlier. All right. Fun fact, uh, where's, oh, I don't have a bag of mine. So, if you buy avocados and you need to use them, um, but they aren't quite ripe yet, let's say hopefully you've got like 24 hours or so, you can actually put them into a brown paper bag or a paper bag of some sort with a banana um, because the chemicals and gases that the banana releases as it ripens also speeds up the ripening of an avocado. So yeah, when I got these yesterday, they were actually a little too firm. Um, guys, today there's definitely squishier, mm -hmm. not overly squishy. Uh, so we should be good. So that's the fun fact tip of the day is how to ripen an avocado. It quite a bit. It does, yeah. Okay. Quite a bit. So not just leaving them on the counter, but actually. Yep, in, okay. in a bag with an avocado. I mm -hmm. mean, in, in the bag with a banana. Okay. Yep. Okay, knife. What's your knife choice? Oh. I think I want to use this one. I think it's a good choice. Okay. So do you remember what this one's called? It's called a paring knife. There we go. All right, so how would you do this? I don't know how I'd really do it. I think I would probably just go all the way lengthwise. Yes, That's but. probably what i do. So here's an, an easy way to do it, right? And um, this one, again, be careful when you're holding it. So mm -hmm. start at the top and, and just slide in until you hit the pit. Mm -hmm. Once you hit the pit, just start rotating the avocado. Okay. Round and around. And then you're gonna get that perfectly open avocado. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Yep, you just pull it, twist it and pull. Voila. Okay, now how would you get the pit out? Well, I would probably try not to cut myself. I would do that. So easy way. <laughs> don't, don't do that. That makes me nervous. <laughs> Um, take a knife, mm -hmm. and we're going to the pit, and rotate it. Oh, just just twist it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Look at that. So what I like to do with the avocado is, and actually if you're going to dice avocado, it's so super easy to do right here uh, while it's still in its skin. Mm -hmm. Do be careful though, because you're going to be putting the knife in, and if you push too hard, you'll come through and potentially uh, cut, you cut yeah. yourself. You got it, yeah. So I just come through and I make lines mm -hmm. and then I just turn it. And when it comes out, it's going to be um, a little thicker in some parts than others. Okay, so do this for me. So instead of holding it like this, hold it to where you're more oh. like this. Yeah. So we're it's not, all about keeping the so blood. So we're not it's inviting a, danger. <laughs> it's all about keeping the blood under the skin. <laughs> Please. Yeah. No gushing. No gushing. Okay. All right. Did you get yours? Yeah. All right. Still done. All right. So let's do the other one. Okay. Let's hold it well and get your bolster. Oh. And I will say this, this is one of those times where it might be better or okay to, um, if you don't hold it by the bolster, put your finger along the spine. Like I saw this. you doing it. You're breaking your own rules. Yeah. I was watching. Yeah, it's because this, when you're doing the small, delicate work, holding it like this gives you a little more control. Mm -hmm. um, but still, you still don't want to do it like this. So, bolster or spine. Spine is the flat part of the knife mm -hmm. there. All right. So, now it's time for the big reveal, which you may have already figured out by now. 
Oh. We're not just cutting for fun. <laughs> okay. No, we're going to make us some guacamole. Oh, okay. All right, we're back with my guac pot and we're ready to go. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do first is uh, scoop the guac in. I, I'm assuming you've made guacamole from scratch before? Yeah. Perfect. So. I don't know how good it was. You've said that word really with hesitation. <laughs> I don't know how good it was. Uh, so easiest way to get it out is just simply take your spoon in. But what I want you to see is we're actually going to mash this up, obviously. But I wanted him to practice dicing because I love throwing diced avocados on top of salads. Mm. Um, or sometimes I'll do uh, like a bacon cheese avocado melted with Swiss toast type thing. Um, and having a diced avocado is awesome. So this is how you would dice. But yeah, we're just going to scoop it all right into our little uh, know, guac dish. It's, all, it's I just always call it a guac dish. But yeah, I think if you can add some plant fat to anything you're eating, you, you'll feel so much more sustained for so much longer. So let's talk about that, Doc, because mm -hmm. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. What is it about adding fat that helps the digestive process slow down? Well, regarding the digestive process, some people, some people that I work with, they can't handle this. They can't handle it. It's impossible. They just can't do it. So, you know, there's a few people out there like that. My clinic, we see pretty tough cases. So, you know, not everything is for everybody. Most people should handle some of it. If you haven't eaten a lot of avocados before, don't jump into it and think, oh, avocados are going to be my friend. There will be problems. So take your time with any kind of fat because avocado is high in fat. That's all it is. Good fat. Uh, good fat, um, but but it still can be challenging. So yeah, it but but it sustains you because fat, plant fat is easier to for your body to accept than animal fat. But it but it, it does sustain you. It'll sustain you a lot longer. So if you if you're making a salad, and you might have just um, I don't know just just vegetables, no other protein sources on it. Maybe maybe some uh, vegan source proteins. But if you, you'll it'll keep you going for a while. But if you add avocado, you'll you'll be sustained for much longer because of the fat, high energy content, so. Love it. Okay, I was monologuing here. All right. Yeah, that's why I'm already done. There it is. Okay, so there is our avocado. All right, so we've oh. got that. I'm gonna let you mash it. Okay. All right, so the secret to super creamy guac oh. is actually, I don't wanna do that, mayo. Uh, but don't get junk crap, craft, you know, shit stuff. Just don't, <laughs> just don't do it. Um, so this is, this one's from Primal Kitchen. There's um, probably two, two or three brands out there that I would trust, but um, I'm going to let you read the ingredients because I don't have my glasses on me, so okay. they're somewhere on there. But they're, this is a, this is a mayo I would be okay recommending for people. You usually don't go wrong with Primal Kitchen, yeah. right? Yeah, they got good stuff. So what do we have? We have avocado oil, organic eggs, Organic egg yolks, organic vinegar, sea salt, organic rosemary extract. Wow, yeah, it doesn't get much more simple than that. Right. right. So <laughs> you look at these things and you go to the grocery store, you'll never see a line of ingredients that is like one line. You will see three quarters of the label will be ingredients. So there's a link right there. All right. I didn't so even know about that product. Here we go. Well, no, no. another thing to no, learn. No. All right, so we're gonna just add in about a tablespoon, not a lot, mm -hmm. but it helps it get extra creamy. Mm -hmm. right, so go ahead and mix that in for us if you would. There we go. Nice. All right, so uh, you can, when you move things off the board, you can use your hands, you can use your, Try not to use your knives because that just helps dull them out faster. Um, or you can use a scoop. So ah. oftentimes it's just easier to get things in on a scoop like this. I like that. And then bring them straight over. You're up. Beautiful. It's like a it's like a shop. Yeah, it's a little snow shovel for food. Yeah. So you don't want to dull your knife because you spend half hour. Take out the big pieces. Um, remember, he, got remember he got he, voted he, off yes, the island. He is off the island. You do not bring him back. Perfect. All right. Last thing to cut is the is the lime. Hmm. So what would you use for cutting it? 
a shark. I'd use a paring knife. I probably would too. So go ahead and grab one. Yeah, and we're going to use this little device. If you guys don't have one, it's super handy. It is a citrus press. So mm -hmm. to do this, you just cut it in half this mm -hmm. way. Now watch how you hold it. And if you're not... Make me yeah, nervous. Everything's you make wrong. me nervous. Everything's wrong. Um, super easy, right? So mm -hmm. you put the, you put it flat side down. Oh really? Yeah. I did not know that. I have one of these at home. Really? And I just do it. It fits <laughs> better the other way though. Yeah, but you get more. I, I understand. Yeah. But I understand the engineering now. Then you go down. Does that ever work better? <laughs> wow, my life is different now. Just when you think. It's amazing what guac can teach you. Apparently, it reminds you how little you know. That's the worst thing. I'm gonna grab some salt. Wow. Oh. Keep going. Okay. I, just, I like a lot of lime in my guac. How about you? Yeah, but I probably wasn't getting all the lime out before. It's okay. You're getting it all over my my. Yeah, I see that. My countertop yeah. right now. Yeah, see, there's there's, there's holes on the bottom, and you just. Yep. You got cleaned up the duty. That's all I'm saying. All right. Let's get one more lime. This is what happens when I leave you unsupervised. That's right. One more cleaning to do. I did not know that was supposed to be. People are going to be laughing at this. Oh, How didn't you know, Dr. No, Harrison. don't. Don't bring yes. This way, right? <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> it really is a simple tool. I promise it's a simple tool. I know, but it looks confusing. That's the thing. See? Look. One. Now, if you will kindly go over to a little food pantry right there. Uh -huh. Bottom shelf on the left, right near the fourth front, are our chips. Oh. And you left a big piece of them. Snuck by. All right, I gotta, I've got to supervise your dicing next time. Cause... Another one? Those are special. Those are going on your chips. They survive. They're going on your chips. They survive. All right. So, you want to open up? Open All right. All right. Any questions for me about about what? How to open a bag? Like this? No. See, even, the, even this is difficult here. See? There there go. Any questions for me about knife use, um, cutting uh, boards? How they I do. dice correctly. I do this knife. Yeah. I don't understand knife. where you would use this knife. So it is kind of Seems the too long. It's well yours is. Yeah, That's, but yours is pretty long too. No, it's not oh, too bad. Only about six inches. Okay. Um a utility knife it, it's great for kind of that in, intermediate. So cutting up chicken breast, cutting pork, um, cutting various vegetables. Uh, it's a they call it a utility knife because it really is a utilitarian all around knife that you can use for a lot of things like we could have used this on the limes. What what about something like proteins, like animal proteins, meat, steaks, roasts? What what would you want to use? The utility knife? It depends on the thickness mm -hmm. and the toughness. Okay. So like most like a, a steak, I mm -hmm. tend to go for this because and sometimes and and let me say this too, pre cooked versus post cooked, right? Because if if you cook a pork chop, it's typically fairly tough mm -hmm. um, and I like to be able to have a little more surface area to work with so okay. I'll just go in there and uh, cut it with this. This Thank guy you. though I use you know chicken, um, vegetables sometimes I'll do that with oh in fact I'm so glad you said that because we're not quite ready to to try this. So, so go ahead go ahead ask a question. What's the okay. question? Okay the, the other question was these things on the knife. Yes. Now, now yours has them. That's not a serrated knife. Like the bread knife is considered a serrated Correct. knife. Correct. But what are these? I, I automatically think it's so things don't stick to them. That is exactly right. It's like, think like of it like cheese. a golf ball, right? Think of it like a golf ball. It's got the dimples to help it that fly the, through the air faster. Is that easier. why? And that's is what... That, I'm not a golfer. Oh. Is that, that's why? Yes. Okay. That's, that's the, what the dimples and the golf balls are for, is for right. aerodynamics. This helps keep um, wet foods from sticking to your blades. Okay. So potatoes, tomatoes. So like things, yours had hydrated. them, or yep. at least the one had yep. them, so, two of them, but mine didn't. Or, yeah. Correct, yeah, and not all knives do. I could have gotten a chef knife without them. What is it called? I Very forget. Important? Okay. I forget. Just look for I just, call them, I just call them dimples, yeah, mm -hmm. little dimples. Um, 
but that's what they're for, is to help keep the food from sticking directly onto your knife. And we do have one more knife we need to go through. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, so don't do. Yeah, so we've got some cilantro mm -hmm. for our guac. Let me give it a quick rinse. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna go over how to actually chop this. So cilantro. Why do some people absolutely hate it and some people don't? It's a gene thing. That's what I thought. It's a gene That's thing. Yep, there is a gene some people have where cilantro like tastes asparagus. like soap. Like asparagus. Well, asparagus makes your pee smell weird. If you have the genetic component, not everybody. Not everybody? Uh -huh. Well, no. I must have it. <laughs> All um, right, so cilantro. Cilantro. Cilantro is fun because it's one of the few herbs that you can actually eat the stem as well. So you don't have to worry about getting the stem into the guac because it tastes just like cilantro. Oh. And it's not uh, overly firm, makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna give you some, and we're gonna go through two different ways to actually um, cut up the cilantro. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab some for me too. All right, and I'm, we're gonna do it and then I realized that many people don't have a knife because you're puny little knife. We're gonna do the other one's bigger. I win on this one. We win on that one. So we're gonna do it with this first, and then, yeah. we're, then I'm also gonna show you how to do it with a chef's knife in case you don't have have one of these. Okay. So okay. this is all about you want to get it up into a nice tight bundle. Right, obviously if you see any uh, leaves that are brown or discoloring, get rid of those first. Mm -hmm. So like instead of folding it, I'd probably just like give it a quick cut so I can make it smaller. And then what you would do is again with your claw, mm -hmm. right? You come in here. Like that. Yep. Is yours not sharp? Mm. Try mine. And just Yep, just down, just like that. Exactly. Yeah, yours is sharp. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll sharpen yours again before you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay, good. so after you've gone through one pass, you're gonna wanna go through it again uh, in the other direction. So you can either turn your board or you can turn your little pile of herbs here. Let me grab this from you. Uh, So now we're going to do the other side with our chef's knife, just so you can see the different options. Right, so I'm turning my pile, mm -hmm. bringing my pile close to me. Right, and so what you do is you you can either rock like this, or you can hold down the tip. And what I like to do is hold down the tip, and then you just move the knife in a diagonal in a arc. So the goal is always to get your tool to work for you so you're not you know, cutting fingers or, Correct. or just... getting mad or yep. squirting lime juice all over the <laughs> oh, Especially if it's a friend's house. I mean, yeah. if you want to well, do it in your own kitchen, you that's one it. thing. That's the way you should do it. Because <laughs> there's no better place to learn than there. <laughs> yeah, so just come through. You go back and forth. And then when you get to the consistency you like, you're done. Mm -hmm. And that'll cut your time down on like a third from the way I was doing it. Yes. Uh -huh. And whenever you use a knife, you should never use a lot of pressure. That's so, a good that's a good component. And, and I didn't realize how much I was using um, with mine. Yeah. So they're sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if it's not cutting easily, fix the knife, whether it means uh, a new knife, a sharper knife, whatever it might be, uh, fix the knife. Otherwise, you're going to hurt yourself and you're going to start to hate cooking. So, That's true. cilantro in. Okay. So, how much is too much? Uh, it depends on the person. If they have the genetic piece. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, you don't have it, do you? No. Okay, no. yeah. I'm for the cilantro. Yeah, we do have quite a bit of onion in here, but eh, we'll make it work. Okay, chip. Chip. All right. Okay, so you're the chef, so you try it first. Well, I think you should grab one too. I'm a grasshopper. Because we have to... Okay. All right. 
You gotta cheers. Gotta cheers. 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 Nailed it. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Not really good. Especially when you get the lime in there. And it's you all know, about the lime. It's all about making sure that the right amount gets in the bowl. My monthly, you might have my, some spray over. My, but, my monthly lime bill now after that hack is going to be down <laughs> like a fraction. Yep. So, thanks for our first yeah. session. Uh, guac with Doc is, uh, <laughs> is what we've just made. Apparently. And, um, yeah, come back. We're going to be doing some more videos about how to use cooking tools and how to mm -hmm. keep Dr. Harrison from uh, burning his, himself, I'm sure. That's right. Somewhere along the way, he's going to reach in to grab something out of the oven without a It'll be fun. Whatever. Yeah. Do you want to give a little bit of your contact information? Oh, yeah, sure. So I, again, Chef Sherry with Chef Sherry Sauces. You can find me grab at... Grab those bottles. Oh, ChefSherrySauces.com. Mm -hmm. um, what I do is I have put into bottles six flavors of sauce to help make your lives easy. I have herbed cranberry fig. Zesty orange ginger, honey roasted garlic, bourbon barbecue, smoky brisket, and pecant peanuts. And they're all based around health. So you're going to find lots of organic, non GMO ingredients. They are all uh, low sugar, low salt. So they're diabetic friendly, they're gluten friendly, meaning that they're gluten free. They're also all either vegan or vegan, meaning uh, vegan plus honey. So uh, I'm all about how can I help you? make cooking easier for your life so that you are eating healthy. And it's great for simple meals or we can go more complex, uh, but either way, I've got you covered. So again, chefsherrysauces.com. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Chef Sherry Sauces. And all of those have contact information too, in case you want to reach out. Yeah, for sure. We'll have the contact information below this video, wherever it's being posted. But I think, you know, when I when I met you, it wasn't long ago, and, and I thought the concept was really interesting because my job is to try to, find, try to find the underlying causes of chronic illness. And, and many times there's people that have food problems, right? allergy sensitivities, or some people have exaggerated allergies and sensitivities where, where their body is reacting but shouldn't. And one, one way is not just removing all those foods they're reacting to, but trying to get things working better in the body so they can increase their immune tolerance and and sometimes that makes eating very bland right so when you talk about the sauces you know you can you know you said you're telling people just try to cook some chicken okay. and the sauces can can take over a lot of that and make food exciting again and that's why yeah. i thought it was really interesting uh the product the concept and the philosophy so yeah it is all about um so many people think that healthy eating is bland or healthy eating is time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, I am here to change that perception. I'm here to change that belief because I can attest that I, it doesn't have to be. And I've got it all covered for you in these sauces and maybe one of our videos um, we'll go over putting together a meal and I'll show you everything you would have had to do if you didn't have the sauce. It's true. So all of the, just everything involved. And we'll, we'll get into that another Maybe time. Maybe that could be the next one right. or the third one. I don't know, something the, like that. Something anyway, good. thanks for joining us. And I look forward to the next time. And hopefully I get a little bit more yeah, grip I on want, my knives. I want some more guac. Yeah. All right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> it's good. Good guac.